week ago, things were looking up for the Detroit Pistons in their playoff battle against the upstart Washington Bullets. Two comeback victories, including one on a miraculous shot by Isaiah Thomas with time running out, put pesky Washington on the brink of elimination, and Detroit was ready to sally forth in the playoffs. But one week later, those piston smiles have been wiped off the faces by a determined bullet team that has climbed off the mat and tied the series at two games apiece. It has been a physical series, with Washington countering all of Detroit's vaunted roughhouse tactics. Now they hope to knock the Pistons right out of the playoffs. And so today in Game 5, whose prayers will be answered? Can Isaiah fire up the Pistons, or does Moses have his eye on the promised lands? Detroit since December of 1986. Washington controls the tap. Steve Coulter holds it high over his head, goes to Bernard King. He's being guarded by Adrian Dentley. Lambeer Malone early on. Going to keep him out of foul trouble if you're Chuck Daly. Daly has purposely kept Lambeer off of Malone throughout this series. This series, in an effort to keep him out of foul trouble. And Lambeer answers quickly with a shot from outside. Now Chuck Daly couldn't have asked for more. Lambeer, a perimeter player, has had problems getting that jumper off in this series. And, of course, uh, as I said, Chuck Daly did not want to pick up early foul trouble. Has had Mahorn on him early on. Billy, there's been a lot of talk about Lambeer, and maybe his confidence is shaking. Didn't look like it on that shot. This is Williams, left side for the Bullets, and it's tied at two. Since John Williams has moved into the lineup, he, of course, has led the Bullets giving them that third player they can count on consistently night in, night out for the scoring. It has been that kind of series where it has stayed close throughout. Neither team really been able to pull away. The largest lead throughout the series has been 12 points. This is Thomas, left side, whistle way out front. No hope for help for uh, Coulter at all outside as Isaiah had the court spread fairly well, gave him a lot of room to operate on the drive. Lambeer, top of the key, over to Thomas. This is Dumars. Dumars has been struggling. Lambeer again. Bernard King not getting out off, fighting off of that double low screen. Lambeer, of course, not hesitant at all, showing an awful lot of confidence in his game. His problems have been down deep at the post. This is Malone, Jeff Malone. Rebound Lambeer. Outlet pass to Dumars. Here come the Pistons. The Pistons do want to run today. Thomas. Rebound Lambeer. Oh, is he really playing hard right now and has started to get some production, which he has not had earlier in this series. Williams on the baseline, working against Mahorn. Good nice cut. pass inside to Coulter. And that's what happens when you're so much aware of Moses Malone, Jeff Malone, and of course, Williams and King. A guy like Coulter can sip right on through that defense. Dantley behind his back, goes into the paint. Nice pump fake, right side, tries to bank it in. Mahorn, and the foul. One of the big advantages, of course, for the Pistons is the fact that any time you see Adrian Dantley touch the ball down the low post, he's going to be double and triple teamed. As a matter of fact, until the outside scoring starts to pick up for the Pistons, you're going to see as many as three or four men attack. When you attack like that, obviously, you have a real problem with weak side rebounding, and that's why Mahorn was so open. Foul was on Williams. And Mahorn misses the first one. Rick Mahorn is a 76% free throw shooter, as you saw a look at Chuck Daly there. Mahorn, of course, bending over, and you know the serious lower back problems that he's had. It goes day to day for him. He just tries to keep it loose as best he can. That back problem has kept Mahorn out of games down the stretch, sat out game one and two, finally started in games three and four. Malone trying to cost, come off that low double screen. Bernard King inside. <laughs> And often a guy that's a great screener will end up stepping out and getting off a good shot. And that was the case for Bernard on that play. Everybody was concentrating on Jeff Malone. This is Dantley. And he traveled. Turnover number one for the Pistons. Now, Washington, Billy, has controlled the tempo of this series playing in that half-court offense. Tim, that's exactly what's happening now. And Chuck Daly asking his team to come up and pick up a little bit higher defensively because you can feel the pace of this game is a half-court game which plays right into the bullet's hands. 
Moses Malone on Lambeer, and he'll fire from outside for two. Lambert did exactly what you want to do against Moses. He pushed him out and receiving the ball to a point about 16, 18 feet. But Moses can make that face-in jump shot. Bullets lead by three. And again, they're going to go down low and call a foul away from the basketball. Washington, ball number 20. Steve Coulter, his second. Coulter is on Coulter. That's the second foul. And that's going to bring going to bring Daryl Walker in in a hurry, but I, you know, you can't blame Steve. He was trying to fight through the screen. You've got Ricky Mahorn with his elbow right up in his throat. Coulter just tried to protect himself. Daryl Walker comes into the ball game, as Billy mentioned, for Washington. That's pretty much been the scenario thus far in the series. Walker comes in early for Coulter. Nice pass inside, blocked away by Moses Malone. The outlet pass to Jeff Malone. And the whistle and a foul. This one will be against Lambeer, and that's exactly what Chuck Daly does not want. A look at Wes Unseld. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame Tuesday, one of the NBA's all-time rebounders. He was MVP of the Rookie of the Year, all in the same season. He and Will Chamberlain, the only two to do it in the history of the game. Williams hits them both. Washington up by five. 8-2 run now for the Bullets. Mahorn working on Moses. That good low post position on Moses that time. Moses normally will fight over the top there and not let that pass get in so low to the basket. Not many guys of the strength of Mahorn or anybody in the NBA that gets the ball in that low post position won't score on you. Malone takes the baseline. Little jump hook, rebound Moses Malone. His shot won't go, rebound Mahorn. Stanley looks inside, had the shot, now goes to Lambeer, and Lambeer with the sky hook. Good pace that time, and it all started with an excellent outlet pass, two hand over the head. Mahorn taking a page out of what used to be Wes Unsel's patented move, that over the head, long pass down court to start the break. Lambeer's been averaging 11 points, 10 rebounds in this series, and he already has six points here in the first period. 7.52 remaining first period. Good double by Isaiah Thomas. And a switch on over by Adrian Danton. Daryl Walker falls Darryl away. Walker. That was for two. 12-9. Bullets. Bullets were really having a problem with injuries throughout the course of the year. Everybody knows Bernard King's problems. Of course, Daryl Walker being out really hurt. Joe Dumars for two, and we have to reiterate there, Billy, that Dumars has been shooting a mere 29% for the series against Washington. I talked to Isaiah before the game. He said Joe's shooting his shot. The shot looks good. He's just been taking it in positions that he's not comfortable with. Walker gets it into Moses. Good defense by Lambeer that time. Forced Moses out a little bit farther again. Out to Dumars on the break. Numbers aren't there. Dumars takes it anyway and scores. So the home team jumps back up by one. King looking for his turnaround jumper. He doesn't explode off the floor as well as he used to, but that's a patented move of his. Great pass. Dantley couldn't get it off the feet, however. And Detroit starts to push the tempo. They lead by one with 6.38 remaining first period. Percentage, particularly when you take in consideration the first two games in their own arena, Detroit shot right at 40 percent. Nice clear out, bullet. Oh, perfect clear out. Can't get it to go. The outlet pass to Thomas. Thomas, nice pass to Dumars. This is the pace that the Pistons would like. You can't ask for a better clear out situation for John Williams. Mahorn had no help behind. Dumars now three for three. And Detroit leads by three as Jeff Malone penetrates the middle. Followed by Moses. Good shot. Yeah. Knocked away by Mahorn. The outlet pass to Dumars. You can see that Detroit is really forcing the fast break up. This is Walker. Pushes it up the right side. No set in the offense there. He drives. And his shot is a tough one. He can't get it to fall. Dumars gets the loose ball. Not the type of pace nor the shot that Wes Unsel wants from his club. Two-man game. This is the situation we mentioned a minute ago. Detroit both hitting offensively and on the boards. And now we have 
Detroit's biggest lead of the game. Timmy, Pistons that was on a 12-2 run. Tim, that was an excellent two-man game. Three guys clearing out on the high side, and just Lambeer and Isaiah Thomas able to play their little pick-and-roll action. Nice pass to Williams, who penetrates and hits. Nice to have that kind of Moses angle as a pass from Moses Malone. Looks right over the top. You do like angles, don't you? I think it's one of the real keys to basketball, on your, particularly on your passing, whether it's from the sidelines, out front, or over the top. Adrian Dantley made that look easy working against Williams. Now, that has been a problem in this series, the matchup of Williams on Dantley because of Williams' size. The Big A has uh, averaged over 24 points a game in the playoffs throughout his career, so it's not surprising when he gets isolated that he can score. This is Bernard King for two. Adrian Danley came over for the double team that time on Moses and, and really didn't have the, the right distance to come on a double team. Moses was out of his range. Danley scored one at the foul. 21-16 now. Pistons. This is Jeff Malone. Malone working on Dumars, has troubles. It goes off his foot, and it'll be Detroit basketball. Excellent footwork by Joe Demars against Malone, forcing him to his left. John Sally comes into the ball game for Rick Mohorn for Detroit. Sally, not a big offensive threat, Billy, but he's been very strong on the boards. Matter of fact, in game two, he pulled down 10 offensive rebounds, which was a Piston playoff record. And had 14 points in that game, solid off the bench. Adrian Dantley drives, and he's fouled. The foul will be against Williams, and right now, A.D.'s quickness is giving Williams a lot of trouble. You see, Adrian has that ability to go either to his right or to his left. He also drives with the basketball under control at all times so he can pull up and still post you when he gets inside. Causing a lot of headaches for the Bullets right now. Another clear out for him. Pistons like that matchup. The rebound Moses Malone. The outlet pass to King. King drives left side on Lambeer. His shot won't fall. Lambeer rebound. <laughs> Jeff Malone gets it to Moses. Now Moses Malone will come down and Washington will set its offense. Washington really has not been getting into that offensive scheme though, Billy. They really aren't. They, they're not in their sink yet at all. Probably need to get the ball in Daryl Walker's hands a little bit more. Let him get the org organization going for him. Moses falling away from Lambeer. You'd think that he would go into him. Lambeer's playing a great first period here. Well, that was a calculated gamble by Chuck Daly. So far, it's really worked out. Lambeer only has one foul. That was not created by Moses. So he's in good shape. Isaiah's shot won't get the roll. Williams with the rebound. Walker to Jeff Malone. Nice pass to Moses, and Moses is fouled. Shot won't drop. Offensive against Moses Malone. It's going to be called, Timmy, on Jeff Malone be, as he gave off the pass to Moses. Two minutes, 57 seconds remain in the first period. The Pontiac Silverdome is alive. Malone, who has been averaging 31 points in this series, is 0 for 3. That doesn't bode well, Billy, for Washington. No, I think what they're going to have to start doing is setting some solid screens for Jeff Malone because so far Joe DeMars has really been able to handle him by himself even when he gets caught in a clear out. See the Lakers out to a quick start. Now, Charles Jones has come into the ballgame for Washington, replacing Williams in that matchup for Dantley. Detroit can't get the ball inbound, so they call a 20-second timeout. That is a good move by Wes Unseld, I think. Charles Jones, of course, known for his defense. Well, I think, I think the key is going to be uh, for the Bullets, Tim, is to get in their offensive flow. This game is moving much too quickly for them. You can see almost three minutes to go in the first quarter. We're looking like it's going to be a 100-plus type ball game, and that's not their kind of game. Well, it has been a very physical series. You see game one, first time they met, Washington led 42-38 at the half, but the Pistons went on a 21-6 run. Detroit won it by nine. Game two took a desperation shot by Isaiah Thomas with nine seconds left to give the Pistons a one-point win and a 2-0 lead in the series. Facing elimination in game three, the Bullets got tough, came back, won both of them at the Capitol Center, and that brings us to this, game five here at the Silverdome. 238 remaining first period. Let's see if they try to set some solid screens. Here it is. Jones out for Malone. Gets the switch with Sally on him, but hits the jump. Malone. Tough shot for Malone, too. Had to release it high, falling away. I, I think he shoots better with a little defense on him than he does a wide open shot. That time, John Sally just didn't get out tough enough on him. 16 to 6 run for Detroit. This is King now. 
working on defense and working hard. Good job by King. Now they move it over to Moses Malone on Mahorn, and he swats the ball away from Mahorn, who hits a tough shot. Well, you can't ask Moses or Bernard King to do any more defensively than they did on both of those players. Five-point Detroit lead. Jones at the top of the key. He's not an offensive threat, really, for Washington. Malone work, working off the double-O screen. Walker from way outside. Fight for the rebound. Sally has it. One and done for the Bullets on every occasion. Get no offensive boards at all. Dantley with the drive and the foul. Adrian really has that change off the pass. If you missed it, Chicago beat Cleveland well, in the first game of our doubleheader here on CBS, 107-101, and Chicago advances and will play the winner of this game here between Detroit and Washington. The Lakers off to a big start against Utah. Billy, you don't think the Lakers can go all the way this year, do you? Well, you know, things are breaking for them nicely in the West. I didn't think so. I thought they were going to have to play Portland in the second round. They've had a nice rest now, which helps their ball club, which was in a healing process anyway at the end of the year. So I think they've gotten a big break uh, as to the way the games are falling the West so far. Not that they needed it. They certainly are a super ball club. Manu against them, huh? Billy, look at this. Manu Bowl comes into the ball game, the 7-6 center for Washington, and Moses Malone will get a rest as Dantley is ready for his second shot. Dantley, a fine free throw shooter, 86%. Scored 45 points in the last two games, connecting on 22 of 33 field goals. So he's had a hot hand. Came out of Notre Dame a year early. He's been with five teams. Only one year in his career as he shot under 20, 20 points per game, and that was when he was with the Lakers. Another solid screen. Malone. Rebound inside is Jones. He has it knocked away, and Thomas is the last to touch it. It'll be Washington basketball. On the floor now for Washington, King, Walker, Manupo, Jones, and Jeff Malone. Chuck Daly getting a break, too, with Moses out of there. He can rest Lambeer, keep Lambeer out of foul trouble. That matchup was working nicely for him. Malone penetrates, and he's fouled. And Malone pushes Mahorn, so here we go. Tempers start to get a little bit high and tense right early. <laughs> but, Tim, he did the smart thing. He pushed, and then he backed up rapidly. <laughs> he, he didn't stay in the heat. <laughs> and just, Jeff is just a smart guy. Yeah, Malone. Yeah, you'll see... And here's where it, it was a case. <laughs> it's a case where Jeff Malone was out of control, but did the smart thing, threw up the shot. And after he pushed off, he backed out of there about 20 feet away, which is a smart move. No question about it in the replay, though, that Malone did throw an elbow. Well, you know, it was a soft one. Or Mahorn threw the elbow, rather. Malone at the line. Jeff, a great free throw shooter. Borders on uh, 90%, 88 on the year. Leading score in the SEC when he was a senior. Led the Bullets for four straight years at the line. A little pick up early. Great solid screen on Walker. Nice pass by Thomas because he caught himself in the air, was in some trouble. This is Isaiah now. Penetrates right side. Tries to dish again to Dantley. Does. And Manu Bowl gets the rebound. Isaiah has it taken away. And Mahorn inside. Oh, when you're that big, don't goose it and bring it down. This is Walker. Three on two bullets. King inside and he scores. And there was again a case where the Bullets had advantage with the numbers, were able to get their break going. 33 seconds remain first period. Washington has cut the lead to three. Vinny Johnson in the ball game now. Let's see if Vinny can get some kind of an offensive streak going. He's really been solid in these playoffs. Isaiah, nice quick move to the baseline. Darrell Walker's got to go out and check him for that jump shot. That's certainly in Isaiah's range, and he just exploded by. Washington will play for the last shot. Inside 10 seconds. This is Jeff Malone. His turnaround. Munu Bowl with the rebound. He has it blocked by Mahorn. A uh, tough break for... Tough break for the Pistons. Vinny Johnson ran into the referee. Would have had an easy two. So in the fifth and final game of this first-round series in the East... The Pistons lead by five. They win the first period. We'll be back.
Detroit, which has been very spread out. Very spread out, and also if you're Chuck Daly, you have to feel confident that everybody he's put in the ball game has done their job. Lakers in Utah not even close right now. This is Johnson. Johnson has only been hitting 27% for this series. He fires. Still having a rough time. Nice follow by Dantley, and he's fouled. But it was interesting yesterday after practice. Vinny Johnson wasn't out shooting around. He went right into the locker room, packed and went home. When he was asked about that later, he said, hey, shooting won't help me right now. It's just making me think about it too much. I just have to get out there in the game situation tomorrow and fire. Exactly, and if you're an explosive scorer as he is and a shooter as he is, you've got to keep putting the ball up, and I think his, play, his teammates are giving him that kind of confidence. Interesting that uh, Dantley hits as many shots from the foul line as he does from the field, which shows you what a difficult low-post player he is to handle. The guy at his height, and, he, and you're stretching it when you say he's 6'5", to be able to go inside and get those moves off. He's been doing it since high school. Did it in the co college ranks, of course, has done it as a pro. He doesn't make the second one, and the Bullets get the rebound. You know, once he hit 28 of 29 free throws in a game, which tied Will Chamberlain's NBA record. That was one game. Here's, here's the key. Get the ball in Walker's hands. Get the picks and rolls going on the inside. Bernard King into Jeff Malone. Malone has it batted away. King gets it back. Fires high. A new bowl with the rebound and the follow. He's not close. And Sally gets the rebound for Detroit. Thomas dishes to Lambeer. You notice, Tim, how many six foot ten guys go and post up 18 feet for the basket on a semi-fast break? And that's what makes Bill Lambeer tough. That's what uh, the Bullets have taken away from him earlier in the series. Detroit's biggest lead of the game, eight. This is Jeff Malone. He has it knocked away. Washington not in sync. Another tough shot by King. Rebound with Sally. And the foul will be against Lambeer away from the basketball. That's his second, May Force. Chuck Daly to take him out of the ball game. And if you're Wes Unsel, you might come right back now with Moses. That's two on Lambeer, Billy. Keep in mind, he's been disqualified six times this year. And Daly kept him off Malone throughout this series to keep him out of foul trouble. And if you'll notice, the two fouls he's picked up today were not guarding Moses Malone. Two reach-in fouls. Jeff Malone will now sit down for the Bullets. Williams comes back in. Isaiah Thomas will sit down for Detroit, and Joe Dumars comes back in for the Pistons. Frank Johnson, who just came into the ballgame for Washington, fires. Dantley gets the rebound. Bullets really having a hard time getting some offense going. As you can see, Moses Malone is up off the bench right now. That may have to be the key to punch the ball inside for a while, get something going. Some interesting matchups right now. Dumars into Dantley, Lambeer and Johnson and Sally round out the lineup for Detroit right now. This is Johnson. And you can almost feel the crowd urging him on. Well, Benny was three for six in the last ball game. I think he thinks he's got it going again. Washington wants a timeout. Well, he's renowned for that. And uh, quick off the hoop. He scored 11 points already. Green up over him that time as Bailey was dashing around the floor trying to help out. So it's 28 now. 15. Well, if they can get it down to 10 points at the end of the half, this can still be a basketball game. And it, but they've got to get a rhythm to their offense and find a hot hand. Kofod right now, and Green with it. Off Thompson, out of bounds. Utah's ball. You know, and when you break out to an early lead, and we will keep you up to date on that basketball game as it unfolds this afternoon. That's one of our little look-sees for you this afternoon. Let's send you back to Detroit now and Tim Branton. Back in Detroit, second period, 9.05 remaining in the half. Washington has cut the lead to six points. That lead had grown to 10. On the floor now for Washington, Moses Malone, Terry Catlitz, John Williams, Frank Johnson, and Daryl Walker. This is Moses Malone. Around the rim, Walker gets the rebound. For Detroit, Billy, Benny Johnson, Joe Dumars are in the ball game, along with Rick Mahorn, Bill Lambeer, and Adrian Dantley. You can see Mahorn has switched over to Malone now that Lambeer has picked up his second foul. Walker's shot not close, rebounded by Lambeer. Look at this. Indicative how things are going. But they've been shooting over 50% in the series, have the bullets, and now down in the 30s, certainly not getting it done with their half-court offense. 
Tough shot. Mahorn gets the rebound. He fires, has to adjust in midair. Gets the rebound, and they reset the 24-second clock. This is Johnson. Moses Malone knocked it off Catledge. Bullets cannot get in sync in this ball game, and the surprising thing, they're just down six. If you're Detroit, you want to think at this point you can get a little bit better working margin, particularly the way the Bullets have played. Isaiah comes back into the ball game for Dumars. And Coulter comes in for the Bullets, replacing Walker. Great strip. Frank Johnson with the steal ahead to Coulter, who just came in. He can't control it. Now he gets it. Goes to Johnson. And the foul will be called out front on Vinny Johnson. Crowd thought he walked. Think think maybe that he did. Coulter just couldn't get a handle on that ball. They had the good fast break going. You notice, as usual, Moses, when there is a break and he's down on the defensive boards, he does not get involved in that break. It's four on something. <laughs> you said that about Ralph Sampson for years. Second foul on Vinny Johnson. The Bullets now work the ball inside. Rodman back in the ball game. We expected to see him much earlier in this ball game. Did a great job in earlier ball games, particularly defensively. But since Jeff Malone has not Before gotten off the, 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 the uh, marks Rodman. too well, Rodman didn't Is have to come in for that purpose. There's Williams on the inside, so powerful. LSU product, another player that came out early into the draft. He's the youngest player presently in the NBA right now. 6'9", 237 pounds, and he misses the first one. He had only four points in game one of this series, but since then he's averaged 16 points, six rebounds, and three assists, so he's been a factor. Wes Unseld looks on, a little bit concerned, mainly because his big guns. Jeff Malone, one for six. Moses, two for six, and King, three for eight. And still in the ballgame. This is Vinny Johnson who fires. Good square up by Vinny. He's been on the mark with every shot. Coulter working against Isaiah Thomas. Frank Johnson kicks out. They're trying to work it down low to Moses Malone, but he's in a whole lot of trouble down there with Lambeer and Mahorn. Nice pass inside to Johnson. Great job. Vinny Johnson turned his back to try to double down in low. Frank Johnson did the wise thing. Cut to the basket. Either screen away or cut to the basket. Johnson having a pretty good uh, little run here. Two steals. Good basket. Rodman, who had a big game. In game four, has this one knocked away, and it goes off Johnson. It'll be Bullets' ball. Nice fake out by John Williams. And so with 6.56 now remaining in the first half, there's a timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well. Legends of the NBA. The smooth touch makes it. You still don't have that feeling, though, Billy, that anything yet has ignited Washington. Spreads it out a little bit. Trying to get Jeff Malone open with something. Here's a solid screen for Isaiah, who fights over. Boy, Rodman is all over King. Way outside, Williams' shot is around the rim, falls out. Here comes Isaiah Thomas. A way ahead to Rodman. There come the, the thoroughbreds from last year's rookie crop. Sally and Rodman really running on the break, hitting each other beautifully. Well, at this time, watch Rodman and King. What a matchup that has been. Here we go. Well, Rodman can play any number of three positions defensively. Now he's playing that small forward. Moses, quick move on Sally, and he stepped on the line. Now, Chuck Daly has been complaining throughout the entire series that every time Moses touches the ball, he walks with his first steps. Well, Chuck needs to write a new history lesson. <laughs> because Moses has been doing that since he came into the league. So he can't worry about that in game five. And he Johnson. Oh, he's hot. You can forget the slump. And not only for this game, but if you're Detroit and you start thinking about future games in the playoffs, you don't want to go into them with Vinny having a cold hand. So it turns quickly again. Washington was about to cut the lead to three. Now all of a sudden they trail by nine again. Isaiah's been quiet offensively, but he's really hustling on, on the defensive end of the floor. Bernard has to readjust. Ball's loose. Williams gets it back for the Bullets. And Bernard King, King scores. Williams. Smart play by Lambeer that time not to pick up the foul. He saw John Williams coming. He just stayed away from him. Didn't need to get his third here. 
in the first half. It seems as if every time Washington shoots, they have to readjust in the air. Johnson short with this one. Lambeer gets the rebound. So Johnson fires again. One of the things, Tim, when you're in somewhat of a slump working your way out, you don't want to take a bad shot. And Vinny Johnson took one right before that last wide-open jumper. Washington still shooting poorly. Detroit, though, has cooled off quite a bit. Williams penetrates, makes a tough shot out of it. Lambeer gets the rebound. The outlet pass to Isaiah, and here we go again. Push off by Isaiah. Perfect lay-down pass on that break. Vinny Johnson really filled the lane perfectly for him. Here's the difference. Struggling offensively, has to readjust almost every time it fires. And it looks as if Detroit's having fun. They're playing loose, and they're, they're really trying to get that up-tempo game going. Well, they had the numbers that time, and, and Isaiah just a great pass on the, on the three-on-two break. Number 45, Adrian Johnson Dantley just couldn't lay it down. Adrian Dantley comes back in as you watch Rodman sit down for the Pistons. The Pistons' problem is trying to figure out how to get something offensively going for them. They haven't been able to go inside to Moses Malone. Number 23, John Charles Williams Jones. hasn't Jackson scored when he got it inside, and so far the defense by Detroit has really Number shut down Jeff Malone. Rick Mahorn checks back into the Pistons lineup. Lambeer goes out, Mahorn comes back in. You saw Charles Jones come in for Williams for the Bullets. Meanwhile, Bernard King at the line has nine points, two rebounds. Bernard had 18 games this year, over 25 points, so he can still explode, but he's, he does not have that quickness nor that quick leaping ability he had when he was so hot with the Knicks. You know, that could be the key move of this series, Billy. Wes Unsell putting King in to start game two. He had one point in 12 minutes in the series opener, but then Wes Unsell started him, and the veteran responded with 50 points in the next three games. This is Coulter for the Bullets on the break. Has it knocked away by Sensational Isaiah. Sensational play. Mahorn, Dantley. Isaiah has been Mr. Defense in this game. Well, that was a sensational play and pass, but he has done the job on Jeff Malone. The Detroit lead is seven. Bernard King. And he's fouled by Sally. Is it Coulter's got good move on the inside? He thought he had it. Isaiah not only makes the steal, but has the presence of mind to remember what it looked like back up court, hit ahead. I don't think Mahorn realizes that Adrian Dantley was wide open on that play until he put the ball on the floor a couple of dribbles. Rodman comes back into the ball game. Sally will sit down. Joe Dumars comes back in for Benny Johnson. You consider how hard Bernard worked to get himself back into playing condition. And all the reports about his knee were the fact that he not only would never play again, would have a hard time walking. And here he is back in the NBA. Right now, Bernard keeping Washington in this game. He has 12 points, and the Bullets just trailed by five. Isaiah working against Walker. Good defense by Walker to stay down. Walker has always played well against Isaiah, even with the Knicks when they went to the five-game series. Walker made the key steal against Isaiah, which won the game for New York. Down low to Moses Malone, back out to Daryl Walker. This is Bernard. Not even close that time. Rebound, Rodman. Isaiah puts it on the floor. Back to Dumars. Interesting fast break, Tim, and the fact that all the wrong guys handled the ball on the break. Rodman didn't want it. He gave it, he gave it up to Mahorn, who really didn't want it. Ended up being finished off on that play. Very seldom does that work out. Jeff Malone, wide open. Banks this one, won't drop. Rebound, Thomas again. Nice hedge defense by Adrian Dantley to help out the mark. Frustration now by Jeff Malone as he shakes his head as he goes back down the court. You can see they're stepping out on a little bit of a hedge defensive move against him and forcing him to take everything left. Dantley and Jones battling inside, and they're going to call it. Bullets ball on number 23, Charles on Jones. Jones. Everybody trying to fight for position. Dantley trying to go ahead and get him on his back, but Jones uh, just can't beat him over the top, picks up the foul. Second personal against Charles Jones. This is Rodman. Adrian Dantley working against Charles Jones again. Out to Mahorn. Oh, 
as reluctant as the Bullets are to go ahead and run that break, not surprising, Detroit sending a lot of guys to the boards. Every time Washington touches the ball, the crowd yells, walk. Moses Malone will go to the line now. The foul is against Mahorn, and that'll be his second. So with 2.28 remaining now in the first half, the lead is seven. This is Chevy's new Nova Twin Cam with a new 16-valve engine. What happens when you step on the gas? After import car owners add up all the standard features on a new Chevy Nova, then subtract the $1,200 cash they get when they buy one, they generally come to the following conclusion. The Bullets are staying in this game from the free throw line where they're 11 of 12. Detroit only 4 of 6. And looking on, Jack McCluskey of the Pistons, an interested onlooker, Billy. I've known Jack for a long time, of course, comes out of the great basketball minds of Philadelphia, the Eastern League, a great friend of Jack Ramsey's, one of the great coaches in the history of the game, then went into the college ranks at University of Pennsylvania in Wake Forest, got the job out at Portland with the Trail Blazers in their initial years, and of course, has done an incredible job helping to put this program uh, in very solid shape here in Detroit. thought it was interesting in the morning papers. Here's Detroit wins the first ever divisional title this year. And they're talking about if they do lose today and are eliminated in game five, will McCluskey clean house? Well, I certainly don't think that that would be in order for this ball club. They set an all-time uh, percentage winning record in their franchise. They set an all-time NBA record in regard to the fans that they've drawn. They've got a new facility going up. and It's a relatively young team still. Adrian Danley takes it to the right side, and he's fouled by Jones. One of the things that Adrian is doing very well today is he's getting the ball in the 12 to 15 foot range, which makes it very difficult to double down on him. If he's in the very low post, everybody can collapse. But when he's out on the wings like that, there's no help whatsoever for Caldwell Jones, so he's able to break on by him before anybody can come over to help out. They may have to take the, some gambles and just rush at him anyway, make him give up the ball. Danley now has 10 points. Williams will come back into the ball game, replacing Jones. Now, Danley got off to a quick start, got Williams into some problems, and then Jones came in, and now Jones has had some problems. I think it's also interesting in here, Tim, it's very difficult environment to play basketball. The crowd is extremely quiet. It's a cavernous type arena, and it's hard to develop momentum uh, as the home ball club in a game like today. I said Williams, it was Catlich that came in. Walker, Malone, Malone, Catlich, and King now on the floor for Washington. Rodman down in low with Moses, but they can get him the ball. Shot clock at five. Moses had to step out. He fires with two seconds on the shot clock, fight for the rebound, Dantley gets it. That's a bad play by the Bullets that time, and you've got a matchup that you can score on. You've got to get it down in there. Lambert for two. Not getting in his face. Big turnaround of four points right there. Moves the lead up to eight, Tim. And, and the key is they've got Rodman and Malone right now. Moses Malone, they've got to get him the ball down low. And the foul will be way out front. Detroit calling number 11. How about Lamb Beer? 12 points now, 10 rebounds. He's for his and he's hit four jumpers from the outside minimum. And that's something that the Bullets have been able to do very well in this series. You just get out there on him and not let him get that jumper. 
foul was on Isaiah Thomas. That's his first. Darrell Walker goes to the line. And Tim, we talked about Rodman being able to play three different positions defensively. Today, he's playing the fourth, playing down in the low post. Not many men in the NBA that versatile defensively. Particularly not in their second year, and particularly not a guy that has never played high school basketball. Walker, a 78% free throw shooter, and this is the second one. Dumars gets the rebound. Chance for Detroit really to build on this right now. Get a good working margin going out of the end of the first half. Isaiah coming off the screen. See, they're screaming double down. Nobody going down to help. And a whistle away, and Jake O'Donnell tells everybody to settle well, down. Well, it's going to be on, is on Terry Catledge. Right. It's going to be on Terry Catledge. There was a situation. Wes Unsel just wants the ball out of Dantley's hands First when he gets down in that low. Catledge uh, really wasn't in any position to have to worry to commit that foul because the ball was out on top. One minute remaining in the first half. Switch by Mose Malone. This is Thomas. Set up the same play for Isaiah. And the foul's going to be on Daryl Walker for Bulls slapping foul. at the ball. Daryl Walker is first. Situation. Stanley just checked his hand, Billy, to make sure he had all five fingers. Now, Walker came down over the top. Adrian has the great strong hand, so it's very difficult to hit that ball slapping from underneath. Six foot five, Adrian Dantley. He's now the 11th all-time NBA leading scorer, over 21,000 points. Starting to build him up. Matter of fact, we've got two guys. Uh, Moses now number eight leading scorer with over 21,000 points. Rick Mahorn comes back into the ball game replacing Lambeer. You know, it's almost him like they played this first half to get to the second. Kind of like the Bulls do in Chicago. They play, they, they give up the first 10 minutes of a ball game. Lakers off to a big start against Utah. That came now at halftime. Nice pass inside to Moses Malone. He can't convert. Once, twice, three times. Finally, Catledge hits for Washington. Twenty-five seconds. Got 18 on the shot clock, so Pistons will have to give the ball up. Shot clock at 10. And Dantley's fouled by Catledge. No basket. Well, it's number 33, Terry Catledge, his second. They almost were in a position to attack early there, Tim, and get a chance to get the ball back the second time. As opposed to letting that clock ride on down with, the, with just a six-point lead. Seems like this whole half has been spent with Adrian Dantley on the foul line. It's been a strange half. Has it not really been a well-played half by either ball club. Very quiet. The intensity level we were talking about really wasn't there. The teams have been playing uh, smart defensively. But in the case of the Bullets, Number they just have not gotten in their offensive Sally. sink at all. Checks back into the lineup. Sally comes back in replacing Rodman. Dantley's first shot. Now he has 12 points. Adrian's had 20 or more points in three of the four games in this series. And Tim, with 14 seconds to go, obviously the shot clock off. I think it's really important for the Bullets on this time down the court to do whatever they can to get Jeff Malone something off the screen. Try to get him going into the second half with a good shot. And Washington will take a timeout to talk things over. It's a 20-second timeout, 13 seconds on the clock, and the lead is eight for Detroit. And you can see that Wes Unsel has called that 20-seconder. Jeff Malone gave the signal for it. And, and I'll be very shocked if he doesn't work something in an offensive pattern to give Jeff Malone an opportunity to get a shot to get into a sink in a half-court offense. Let's bring you up to date on what's been taking place. First in the Eastern Conference, you know that Boston has advanced by beating New York three games to one. Atlanta and Milwaukee will play tonight to see who moves on to play the Celtics. And how about Chicago today, Billy? Move their, advance them their way on. And it's really interesting there, with the exception of Boston's one game over New York, that is the only game in the East that's been won on the, on the opposing team's court. So everybody's series had an opportunity to go to five games with the exception of Boston, New York. 
Washington has hung in this series by winning both games at home and elevating their defensive level. Of course, Chuck Daly made an excellent remark, I thought, Billy, about Washington struggling to get into the playoffs, and every game counted. This, this ball taken away by Thomas. All good plans that if not, that don't have proper execution just don't work out. Thomas, four points. Big differential there. Wes Unsel calls the timeout, and they can't get the ball inbounds. This shot counts if it goes. So that's the end of the first half with a score. Detroit 50, Washington 40. Pat O'Brien will be back with the credential at the half after this message. what's real you want a beer that's not he pasteurized not tampered with cold filtered miller genuine draft oh, yeah. On the other hand, I want to point out to no, you, I can't, Democrats I can't, I can't, and Republicans so have seldom agreed on anything. Wrong. Until now. After you. No, I insist after you. No, no, really. Both parties now, selected listen, Delta listen. as the official airline of the Democratic after, and Republican national conventions. Because no, Delta sir. flies more people, more places than ever before. No, no, really Whether you're Democrat, no, really, Republican, sir. or undecided. Peanuts, anyone? If you own a house, you gotta own a shop vac. This baby's got the power to pick up almost anything. Got broken glass nails or wood chips? The shop vac gobbles up stuff that would kill an ordinary vacuum. Uh, and a shop vac wet dry can even vacuum water like a flooded baby. The washing machine is flooding the house. No. Uh, Every house needs a shop vac. Starting at under $50, a shop vac is heavy duty, not heavy money. And remember, if it doesn't say shop vac, keep shopping. Wednesday night, the main event, Rocky, the Italian Stallion Balboa versus Drago, the undefeated Soviet champion. 15 rounds to glory, only on CBS. CBS Sports presents The Prudential at the Half. Sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. And good day again, everybody. Pat O'Brien in control room 43, our New York headquarters for the Prudential at the half for the NBA playoffs on CBS. Our Detroit, in Detroit, our score is Washington 40, Detroit 50. Detroit leads by 10. And the bouncing ball reminds us that it's time again to update the NBA playoffs. Let's now talk about the game in the Western Conference semifinals. That's going on in Los Angeles. And the score there is 55 to 31. The Lakers, as usual, they came out running. And what you're going to see here is a classic Laker fast break. Magic Johnson gets the ball to James Worthy, who hits Byron Scott for the fast break. Frank Layden watches on, and he's got to be a stranger in a strange land. Utah scored only eight first quarter points. That's a playoff record. James Worthy now in the lane, double pumps, puts it in. He had ten first quarter points. Everything seems to be working for the Lakers as Magic gets it to Michael Thompson. And nobody, folks, has ever come back from this kind of a deficit in a playoff game. Earlier today in Chicago, it came down to game five for Cleveland and the Bulls, and when the dust cleared, Chicago has advanced now. 107 to 101 was a score in Chicago. As they have in the four previous games, the Cavaliers came out hot in game five. Ron Harper goes back court. Malone, the only one uh, out there that's had the great series so far, but not today. Blocked by Moses, nice follow by Sally. Ball's loose. It should be Washington ball, and it is. Washington hey, and that three-game sweep last year by Detroit, one of those wins by Detroit was by 43 points. So I don't really think they expected much competition coming into this series. Well, I think Chuck Daly was very aware of how hard the Bullets had had to play to get into the series, so he was aware of it, but the players subconsciously had to feel and look ahead a little bit going into this series. Darrell Walker has it go over the backboard. It'll be the Pistons' ball. When you go seven with Boston, you're not thinking and knock off the Bullets in three right off the bat, and it had won the city the, the series this year in the regular season, so wouldn't be hard to expect them to be looking ahead a little bit. Mahorn comes back into the ball game, replacing Edwards. Ball slapped away by Johnson, and he'll be charged with a foul. Johnson did commit the foul. Another good help that time, though, by Darrell Walker. Bullets foul. 
on number 15, Frank Johnson. It's a Lakers situation. Well, Utah, no rest whatsoever, and I'm not, I'm not harping on the Lakers here because obviously one of the great teams in the history of basketball, but obviously they practice hard. They're well-rested. Utah coming off the big win over Portland, certainly not ready to play today. And earlier today, Chicago advanced past Cleveland, and we'll play the winner of this series. Saw Joe play as a high school senior, and uh, he had stardom marked on him then down in Louisiana, came up with a group of AAU players in North Carolina, played extremely well. They did not win the tournament, however, because there was uh, some kids from New York City. Eddie Pinckney was on that ball club. Chris Mullen was on that ball club. But there's no question that Joe was going to be an outstanding player. I covered his brother David Dumars in the USFL. Is that right? This is Williams working on Sally. Tough shot. Moses gets the rebound. Malone inside, pass to Walker, and he stepped on the line. And Wes Unsel, who was up on the sidelines, just shakes his head and turns and walks in the other direction. Nothing going right for his ball club. But they're still within striking distance. I was just going to say, the interesting thing about it is that Detroit still leads by only nine. feeling now though Tim if the bullets don't make a run very shortly being down 13 now and not getting anything going from either of the Malones they've got real problems Walker over to King they continue to try to go down low does Washington inside power move the ball's loose again Isaiah makes a great save stepped on the line boy just battling out there today I you know, I've seen, as everybody has, Isaiah have much bigger days from a production standpoint in point totals. But I don't know if I've ever seen a better leadership day in regard to what he's doing out there on the court right now. He just he just battled Moses Malone there and, again, almost had the presence to be able to get the, not only the ball, but throw it down court for a layup. Well, why is it in a game like this that teams really can't get in the sink? Both teams have played below their par today. And this is game five, deciding game. I don't know, maybe emotionally they were up just so high. Uh, talking to some of the bullet players before the game, they said, we've got nothing to lose in this one, but they didn't come out loose. Isaiah can't get it to drop. King with a rebound. Outlook pass to Johnson. Detroit lead is 13. This is Walker. They were Walker for two. You know, and although the Bullets like to play a half-court game, you almost think to get back in it, to get themselves moving in sync, they've got to get some breaks going. There's that backcourt scoring, and you can see what it's done to have Jeff Malone have such a subpar ball game. Sally moves over to Dantley, almost had it picked off by Johnson. Isaiah. Bernard King got knocked aside by John Sally, went down to the floor. Boy, Jake O'Donnell doesn't like it either. He's emphatic with the call. The foul is on Sally, as you mentioned, and King says, hey, it's about time you called it. Well, this is a, the type of ball game that I'm sure the officials didn't expect uh, either because there had not been a lot of battling contact, not a lot of fighting through screens. You saw the scoring average of Michael Jordan in that series against Cleveland. And he breaks the all-time NBA record, which four years ago was set by Bernard King against the Detroit Pistons, as a matter of fact, 213 points in that five-game series. You can think of that particular year. Bernard was unstoppable offensively. You saw him play a number of games in Madison Square Garden. He'd just get the ball down the low post, wheel on people, go by, shoot over. Nobody in the league could handle him. It's amazing that he's back in the league after having his knee explode like it did. Total rehabilitation after total reconstruction. Back down the nine. This foul against Daryl Walker on Isaiah Thomas. Well, it's foul number five, Daryl Walker. And that's his second. It's interesting how Bernard King has adjusted his game with that knee. You watch, he very rarely comes down on his, his bad knee. Well, and also he doesn't explode off it on the drive, so uh, his experience as a basketball player is the thing that's keeping him out there right now, not the great physical presence he had a few years ago. He still has the soft release. Only nine points for Isaiah, but outstanding floor game. Nine assists is impressive. 
And he makes the second one, 66-55 Detroit. 4.15 remain now, third period. You know how quiet Moses Malone has been as well here in the second half. They haven't been able to get the ball down the low post to him. Got a very quiet crowd, too. Frank Johnson with five on the shot clock's got to go with it. Good up and under move by Frank Johnson. But again, not getting the ball inside to Moses, not getting any kind of offensive pattern going at all. The horn gets doubled down low. Gantley wants some room, wants a clear out. Thomas has the ball stolen away by Moses Malone. He tried to get it to Mahorn. And Mahorn will be called with a foul. You know, when the coaches break the tapes down of this game, Tim, they're going to wonder what happened to the offensive structure half-court-wise that uh, had been anticipated for the ball game. because neither team really getting into their patterns whatsoever in this game. And on the other hand, you'd say, well, that's probably because Detroit's really running the break well, but there haven't been many breaks executed either. Well, that's more now on Mahorn, Detroit in the penalty situation, so Edwards comes back in replacing Mahorn. Well, Edwards, Edwards really came in, got two quick ones, as you remember, and, but that's just fouls to give. Exactly. A good acquisition, particularly for playoff time uh, by Jack McCluskey and the fact that you want another big man in there with experience, playoff experience, as Edwards has, uh, to go in and commit some fouls. He also is a dangerous shooter from the outside, is over a double-figure score uh, in his career as a playoff player. So, uh, again, it saves Lambeer, keeps Mahorn out of trouble. Steve Coulter replaces Walker. You saw that. Moses Dallas does cut the lead now, back to nine. Mahorn takes that position, Tim, of course, to relax his back every time he first comes out of the ball game. Talked to him before the game, and he said that it's just a day-to-day -day thing, and at some time within a given game, it loosens up or tightens up on him. Sat out the first two games, basically, because of that bad back, and started the rest after the game, after uh, game two, went on started three and four. This is King. Well, they aren't even close. No, there's a case again. No, you know, Moses has not touched the ball in the low post. It seems like, for me, about 10, 12 minutes. And they're not going to win unless they can get him the ball down in tight. They can't even make a run. Nice touch pass over to Dumars. Sally with the rebound. Well, Sally, as you pointed out, those 10 offensive boards in game two really go into the glass wall there. Sally now has six points. Two minutes and 33 seconds remain in the third period. Well, Chuck Daly really has had excellent play off his bench today. Everybody that's come in has contributed nicely. Johnson for two. Frank Johnson. And for Wes Unsell, Frank Johnson's about the only guy that's come off the bench to help him. Last down! Last down! Jimmy, hold the ball! I'm sure Wes didn't expect Last the Malones down. to go down in game five. Really have struggled offensively. Foul will be on Charles Jones. West doesn't like the call. Again, if you're going to double team, you don't need to double team Adrian Dantley 30 feet from the basket. Pick up a cheap foul. 68-59 with two minutes and eight seconds remaining in the third period. been in there long enough. Hey, we're not even tired. I feel good. So I've checked the mileage and it's... Hey, we're the auto line. We're guaranteed. Guaranteed? I feel good. Yeah, two years, no matter how far we go. But no spark plug guarantees that. We do. So good. Yeah, we're the auto line. I... So go pull the plug on somebody else. Okay. Need a fourth? Well, not really. We Ah, let him hit. What's the difference? The longest hitters hit the longest balls. Top flight, the longest ball. Pretty good, kid. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Atra Plus. Its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. 
Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First we made it closer, then we made it smoother. Pat O'Brien in New York with an NBA playoff update. The Lakers continue to roll over Utah. Carl Malone makes the foul shot, but watch this. The ball never touches the ground. The world champions are taking no prisoners. They lead 81 to 58. Let's go back to Tim and Billy. Los Angeles Lakers uh, have advanced and are playing Utah. They lead that game big, Billy, and it looks like they're just cruising right where they left off last year. Well, I was looking at the money sequence, you know, being the, the having the best record in the NBA. They've got a chance to win 505,000 as a team if they can win the championship this year. How about the Denver-Dallas series, which will start this week? Which team do you like there since we saw Denver last week? Well, Mark McGuire really exploded against that uh, Houston club. Denver's a team you better not underestimate. I thought Seattle would win that series after watching the, the two games last week. But Denver just keeps coming on with that Michael Adams and doing a good job with Fats Lever. Winner of this game, of course, moves on and will play Chicago, which beat Cleveland 107-101 earlier today. At the line, Adrian Dantlett of Detroit. You would never believe that there are 18,403 fans here. You know, it's interesting. One year in this building, the Pistons averaged under 6,000 fans a game. Can you imagine what it was like then? <laughs> you could hear the echoes. Washington now will try to get together and have some sort of run. Bullets still cold. Shooting. Six of 18 in the third quarter. 31% for the game. And you notice Jeff Malone has not gotten back into the game, Tim. It's going, they're going with Frank Johnson. You'd think it'd give him one more shot. Here's Malone touching it for the first time in ages. And he's fouled. Don't forget, next weekend, our coverage continues in the NBA playoffs. Saturday, beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And then on Sunday, a doubleheader. Live beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time as well. A doubleheader Saturday, a doubleheader Sunday as CBS coverage of the NBA continues. Number 34, John Williams. And here you have John Williams coming in the game. Coulter going out, which gives them a big lineup. Probably slides Bernard King back into the backcourt offensively. Wes Unsel looked down at Jeff Malone. Malone wanted to get back into the ball game. Coulter out of the ball game. Moses now picking up the slack a little bit. He has 13 points. 78 points and pulled down 44 rebounds in this series in the first four games. And of course, with King playing in a backcourt defensively, the matchup, let's see who's going to play. King's got stuck with uh, John Sally. They, don't, they really don't need that matchup. King on Sally, Johnson on Thomas. Moses on Big Edwards. And Jones on Adrian Dantley, who fires. As the shot clock expires, Edwards gets a rebound and they'll reset it at 24. Daly wants the ball back outside to Isaiah. Both teams playing with one basic guard in the game now. Edwards with the turnaround jumper. Right for the rebound. Rodman gets it back and the foul will be on whom? King? Oh, he went down hard. That's Bernard's third. You're going to see Rodman aggressively going after the ball. He trips up his leg, so he has no support when he went down. Hit on the back of his elbow. This is a strange lineup both these teams have out there now. Frank Johnson and Isaiah Thomas, really the only true guards in the ball game. So they're going with big size here. Rodman misses the first one. You know, Rodman has really been a factor. Wednesday in game four, he hit 23 points, which was a career playoff high. And no points today. So the guy who's been a factor in this series comes in today empty-handed, and he struggles on the free throw line, gets that one to bounce in. Now, Rodman, as you know, not a good free throw shooter. Interesting, the most free throws taken in the NBA history of the playoffs is Will Chamberlain. He also ranks fifth in the most made, but he only shot 47%. So you can see how many times he went to the line. It's a oh, lot of lines that batted away. Benny Johnson now comes in. He'll replace Dantley. John Williams going well into the lane. Sally came all the way across for a great block. Minute Bowl, of course, blocked the most of either anybody on either one of these teams, but Sally been a leading shot blocker for two years for the Pistons. King working on Rodman with the turnaround jumper. Can't get it to fall. A whistle outside. Illegal defense. Or is he going to call no, a push? Uh, illegal D. 
against Detroit. That's against Detroit. Now, Wednesday at the Capitol Center in Landover in game four, both teams went to the line to shoot technicals because of the illegal defenses. One more, and they'll go to the line. One of the things John Williams has to understand on his drives, there he walks on that one. He's got to start looking to dish off the drive because he's being picked up and double teamed when he puts the ball on the floor. If Moses will move for position, he may be able to get a dump inside. And again, Tim, when you look up at the scoreboard, the bullets are just down nine points. It's hard to believe. Pass inside, tipped by Johnson. He's hot, trying to hide in the crowd, and now Jake O'Donnell catches it and says, It'll be Detroit Paul. They're nice. going to give it to Washington. That's a nice job by Isaiah. He brought it to Jake's attention. Wes Unsel shaking his head because he knew that Jake didn't see it. Just a good acting job by Isaiah. The, and, and the nice thing about it is that was the truth. It was touched. A new bowl comes in for Washington. Wes Unsel was upset. Jake says, hey, come on. Fess up. Go tell your coach you tipped it. It's Frank Johnson got a piece. Johnson working on Isaiah. Clearing out a side point. Shot clock at five. Oh, oh nice tap. That's what's so tough. When you clear out a side like that, it, eventually somebody's going to come over to help out. You can't go into the illegal defense, so you're going to come over to help out. And when you do, that leaves the weak side rebounding wide open. Johnson loses it. This is Thomas. Thinks he's at the end of the first half and at the end of the third quarter, both times he gets a big turnaround. That's the end of the third period with the score. Detroit 73, Washington 60. We'll return to the Pontiac Silverdome after this message and a word from your local station. Bullets shooting just 29%, the Pistons 46%. Start out with a little 2-2-1 full court pressure. You do have Jeff Malone back into the ball game to start this fourth quarter. He's got to get untracked if the Bullets have any chance whatsoever. On the floor, Walker, Jeff Malone, Manu Fold, Terry Catledge, and Williams for Washington. Ah! Fight for the rebound. Inside, Williams, his turnaround, and he's fouled. Sally got a piece from the side. What's happening is that Detroit is playing Malone Detroit to come Malone out over two. those screens. That time he was able to go back door cut but Catledge just couldn't deliver the ball to him. So at least Jeff is deciding now, he's one for 11 for the, from the field today, but he's deciding now what's happening to him. Made the adjustment, but his teammate didn't recognize. John Williams, a 73% free throw shooter, and he misses the, the first one. He's the only guy in this ball club played all 82 games this year. With a body like that, he ought to be able to play 82. <laughs> you know, a pretty good indicator, Billy, is that Detroit has 14 fast break points, Washington only two. Now, Washington doesn't fast break him, and they don't take a three-point shot. So that makes them a very bad team to get behind. They, you know, those are the two ways that you best have a chance to come back. Rodman liked that when he shot over seven foot six, Manu Bowl. This is Malone, looks inside. Catlett with a good pump fake, and he scores. Good low post position by Catlett that time. On the floor for Detroit, Dumars, Johnson, Rodman, Sally, and Lambeer. This is Sally. Starting to try to chase a little bit. And referees looking at that illegal defense out there. But uh, Baltimore does, I mean, excuse me, the Bullets, do, they do have to go ahead. There's my... You said you were going to do it, calling the ball right. the they were the Packers at one time. You know that, Tim? No, I remember, of course, the, the Bullets. I remember the Capitals. Yeah, they originally started off as the Chicago Packers. No relation. Remember the Washington Capitals basketball? That's right. Red Auerbach. Red, back. Red still has his jacket. Foul is on Rodman. That's his third. Mahorn will come back into the ball game, and Sally will sit down for Detroit. You know, my old coach was a member of the Washington Capitals team. They had something like 18 straight wins uh, in the early years. I guess that was even before the NBA. Red was the coach. Bones McKinney, one of the players. Bones was on that team. Yep. Played at the Uline Arena. Great after dinner speech. <laughs> one after dinner speech you'll never hear him make, though, is I'll pick up the check. <laughs> Williams misses the second one, fight for the rebound. Mahorn gets it. You've got the feeling that Detroit now is just biding time, melting the clock, and going on to 
take this into the semifinal series. They are ready to advance. Well, Chuck Daly up at half court, but I guarantee you that he never anticipated being at this point in the game and being able to have the uh, Isaiah Thomas sitting on the sidelines just relaxing. Lambeer from outside. His shot for two won't go. Rodman with the rebound, and he scores. Vinny Johnson made that with a super play on the inside using his body to keep the ball alive. 77-63. The biggest lead of the ball game for the Pistons. Good check that time by Rodman. It doesn't help to have him switch off on you. And a whistle away. Malone really struggling. You can just see that he doesn't feel it. Not in his face. I give a lot of credit to the Detroit coaching staff. The fellow, Malone had had the great run in, in the playoffs so far, and they've done a lot of things defensively to shut him off today, and he hasn't been able to compensate for it. Detroit's biggest lead of the game. They are nine minutes and 45 seconds away from advancing. Imagine doing this to your car. Standing businessmen in the country. Spingarn High School in Washington. This is Catledge inside with the power move. No foul call. He wanted it. Back to Catledge. And again, his double team. And fighting in there. Leo Lambert getting off on the break. You know who's picked up the tempo? Rodman. He's starting to score, he's starting to rebound, and he's starting to incite the crowd a little bit. Now, Chuck Daly, I, I think now, is starting to coach for the next series. He's really starting to try to get his guys pumped up and not to relax with this type of lead. He also, if you look on the floor, he's got Vinnie Johnson out there. He's got Rodman out there. He's played Sally a lot. He's got Dantley and Thomas on the bench, so he's getting that nucleus off the bench, uh, getting a lot of playing time, getting them ready to go. He's active on the sidelines like the game is tied. This is Jeff Malone. Well, as I say, I think that's for the next series. He's trying to pump this club up, get them really going. There's Rodman again. And the crowd's starting to enjoy it. I think Chuck has got his own crowd riled up a little bit. Lambeer. Moses Malone gets the rebound. They'll call a foul on Rodman. Moses a little disgusted today. I talked to some of his teammates. He very seldom comes out and shoots around before a game, but he was out very early today shooting around, but it has not been his day, has not been his ball club today. At the conclusion of the game, Billy Packer and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. In conjunction with the award, Light Beer will present a check in the amount of $1,000 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society in the player's name. Rodman really fighting through the screen, staying right on King. There's a double team on Moses. No place to go. He wants a shot out of this. King tries to spin, and he's got it taken away, and now they'll call a foul down the other end. Now yeah, they're banging on the bullets. They're not calling the fouls that side, but it'll be the Washington Bullets on a frustration foul. Well, I credit Chuck Daly with getting his club really to pick up. There's the double team. Lambeer has him on the inside. Good play right there. It's almost a clinic on double team play defensively for young kids. Don't reach for the ball. Just keep those hands active. That's why there was no foul on the Detroit player. The foul was on King. That's his fourth. Inside to go to Mahorn, and Mahorn now walks. Seven minutes, 54 seconds remain in this ballgame. With a 16-point lead, it'll be interesting to see if Chuck Daly comes back with Isaiah and Adrian, try to get an offensive flow going. Again, he's coaching now for the next series. While well, Moses just eliminated Lambeer on that play. He wants a shot. And he wants the foul. He has his glasses knocked down around his neck. Now, Moe's been totally frustrated. He has not touched, touched the ball much at all in the low post. Watch him take position on Lambeer here. That was NBA low post position offense. They called it on Mahorn. That's his fifth. Moses makes the first. Well, he was the MVP for the season in 1979, 82, and 83. MVP with Philadelphia when they won the world championship of the NBA playoffs back in 83. Certainly one of the great players in the history of the game. 14 points, 11 rebounds, makes the second one. Ranks eighth on the NBA's all-time scoring list. Ninth in all-time rebounds. And the folks at the University of Maryland can only speculate what would have happened had he not passed up his scholarship and gone on to play in professional basketball. Well, Lefty always considered him one of his pros uh, from Maryland, even though he was there, what, a day during registration? That's right. He came for registration, decided to get the big check. No foul called Malone and Sally. Now they'll call a jump ball. Well, that was a late whistle, but probably the right whistle. 
Moses had a piece of the ball. John Sally ripped it out. And you either had to call a walk on Sally or call the jump. And the... Good call. Referees have had an easy day. Well, I was going to say the type of the game, which has gotten the crowd out of sync and everybody else out of sync, may have the officials out of sync as well. Isaiah comes back in, dances on as Johnson will go out of the ball game. Well, you know, the officials, they had to sleep last night too, Tim, and you know that they had to anticipate today's game being one of those that would be an absolute war. That has not turned out to be the case. So I'm sure that they're going to relax a little bit more. <laughs> Chasing Chuck Daly down. Chuck now acting up for the crowd a little bit. And I think it's a smart move on his part. Try to get this crowd enjoying themselves in the series. West now starting to get involved now. Unself, the coach of the Bullets. Thomas inside to Rodman. Tough shot. What you don't want to see here is somebody take a, a cheap shot on someone out of frustration. This game has been over for a long, long time. Boy, you don't think Rodman feels it now? You can be sponsored by the U.S. Army. John Stockton and Carl Malone were small college players with big league dreams. Stockton honed his skills at Gonzaga University and now stands as a leader in assists and steals. He often sets up Louisiana Tech's Carl Malone, who has become a dominant player. By working hard at their own game, teamwork has made John Stockton and Carl Malone the best they can be. In a battle drill, to him, Tim, is he's trying so hard to get in control of the game that he no longer mentally is playing the game. It's just not there. He breaks on open to get the ball down low, but they're double teaming wisely, and there just is no shot. Here comes a little half-court trap. Washington trying to squeeze with the pressure. This shot from outside by a lamb beer. Williams clears for Washington. Johnson, Moses, Malone, Williams. Walker and Jones on the floor now for the Bullets. This is Jones with the rebound. From way outside, Walker for two. Walker. Walker's had another solid performance, but he didn't have his running mate, Jeff Malone, going today, so it's been hard for him to do the things that he wants. Here's the 1-3-1 trap. Detroit wisely throws, throws right over the top. Jones fouls Rodman. And that's five. Well, it's foul number 23. Here's what I'm talking about. Most Malone, he's not giving up, obviously. One of the great competitors in the game. Battling all he can. Now, he sees the double team. Normally, he'd throw the ball out here. But he's trying so hard to get something going, and he's just not there. Billy, you want a statistic? Jeff Malone's last points were scored at 106 of the first quarter. It's amazing, particularly the run he was on. Normally, when shooters get on this kind of run in a series, they go all the way through the series. Rodman will go to the line again, this time fouled by well, Darrell Walker. Kind of like watching Mark McGuire in the third quarter the other night for Dallas against Houston. He just got on a roll, and you get the great shooters. The ball hardly touches their hand, and it's up and in. And he makes the first one. Everything going right for Rodman right now, even from the foul line. You know, Rodman was only 5'11 after he graduated from high school. Then in a year and a half, he grew seven inches. And he's having fun. He is having fun and bringing the crowd to life here. Of course, any time he hits two in a row, that helps Chuck Daly, who's now up off his seat, really screaming at his club to pick up their defensive intensity. This is Johnson for two. Frank Johnson. Five minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the ball game. And here's that 1-3-1 one -one trap again. They've got Lambeer down in the corner. If they can find him for the jump shot. Rodman, that's better. That's all that Wes Unsold can do is to try something to create some quick turnovers. But Detroit really recognized that defense well, spread it out, and got the easy basket. Johnson falling away. Tough shot. Rebound, Sally. Chuck Daly says, hold it up. Yeah, smart. Use up a little clock. Dumar sees the alley in the lane, takes it up, and he's fouled. Well, now late in that game, 102-85, as the Lakers run away from Utah. Don't forget, earlier today, Chicago beat Cleveland. 
107-101. Some series by Michael Jordan, and also some series by Chicago, and the fact that in almost every game, they were out of it early and made great comebacks to come back. Two young teams, Cleveland and Chicago, they're gonna be in his playoff history for the next uh, eight or 10 years. So it looks like it'll be Detroit and Chicago in the next round. Bernard King comes back into the ball game for Washington. And Dumas hits his first one. And if you're a Detroit fan, you have to feel good, Tim, in the fact that all of the question marks coming into this game. Lambeer uh, not playing real well. Dumas not playing real well. Vinnie uh, Johnson on a cold streak. All those questions have uh, been eliminated now. They're going to go into the next series very confident. Dumars now 14 points, five assists. And Washington wants a timeout. Too little, too late with 4.53. Uh, it, tempo going exactly their way. But that has not been the case today. They have not been able to function in the half court at all. Four minutes and 35 seconds remain in this ball game and remain in the season for Washington. Dumars for Detroit. This one's for two. Two. And the Bullets try to go again to that half court one three one trap. And with a guy like Isaiah being able to see the court so well, Washington just have no chance. Walker has the ball stripped away. King may have touched it last. No, it'll be Washington ball. They say Thomas got it. Is Isaiah in double figures yet? I, he, if he is, he just is over double figures. But I think his, Thomas his, has 12. His floor generalship today has been outstanding. Set the pace early. Got everybody in the ball game. They're going to call this one on Frank Johnson for the push from behind. Johnson says he didn't. But you can't get a good case from Dumars, who was on the floor. Now well, Frank going for the steal about all you can do. Uh, the line for Detroit shooting one plus the penalty number four, Joe Dumas. You know, you know, it's interesting, Tim, when you think about the trade that wasn't made, Fats Lever and, and Jeff Malone. Uh, Lever having the great day despite the, the knee problem yesterday and the great series. Malone up to this point, of course, having a super series. Might have been a, a, a good trade for both teams that didn't get made. Dumars hits the first one. Of course, the trade that the two clubs did make between Denver and, and Washington that, that took Michael Adams out there to give Denver that great running ball club certainly helped them, but Walker has been no slouch whatsoever for, uh, for the Washington club. Are they going to get to the century mark? That's what the crowd's yelling for now. The lead is 20, and we're under four minutes. I want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Lakers with a big performance out on the West Coast. And here in Detroit, it has been all Pistons. They've made a 16-6 run in the first period. They led by 10 at the half and kept that until here in the later going. We have three minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the ball game now. And Detroit, behind a big fourth period by Rodman, have pushed the lead up to 20. Tim Washington never got into the ball game today. Jeff Malone, of course. As we've talked about, never able to get his shots going. He had carried the ball club offensively along with Moses, Bernard King, but today uh, he disappeared offensively. That really put the pressure on the club to get it down inside, and they couldn't get Moses the ball. Keep in mind, Jeff Malone had been averaging 31 points a game throughout this series. Today, four points, one for 12 from the field, and that certainly has been a difference. This is Frank Johnson of Washington. Ball's loose, Dumars gets it for the Pistons. Nice pass to Rodman. Super to have a guy that's got that kind of speed to fill the lane. Dennis Rodman now has 13 points, and 11 of those have come in this quarter. Blocked by Sally. John wanting to use up some of that clock. The LA Lakers now a final, 110-91 over Utah. Take a 1-0 lead in that series. Two minutes, 50 seconds remain here in Detroit. Sally looks inside. They'll melt the clock a little bit. Shot clock at five. Lambeer fires air ball. I don't know why the Pistons would want to hold it to the point that they don't get off good shots. There's two to go. They've got the game one and might as well their offense. Washington just was out of sync from the get-go today. And even though Detroit was not that solid, and didn't have all the shooting touch they had wanted. They played very good defense. Isaiah was strong with the assists. 
This time out on the floor, it's going to be Detroit and Chicago. Detroit has that big lead over Washington with 225 remaining, so they look like they will move on now, the Pistons will. And don't forget, next Saturday here on CBS, starting at 1 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be Detroit against Chicago, and then the late game at 3.30 Eastern Daylight Time, Denver against Dallas, Game 3. That's all coming up on CBS next Saturday, an NBA doubleheader as the playoffs continue. And we'll follow this NBA all the way until we have a championship. Muggsy Bogues into the ball game the first time. Mark Allery just got in, so Wes Unsel has realized for some time this was not going to be Washington's game. Sally's shot won't go. Rebound bowl. Bullets have only 11 points in the fourth quarter. 31 in the half. Two minutes, two minutes left in the now, Bogues, quarter. somewhat like Michael Adams in the fact that his game is to push the ball up the floor really at the wrong place at the wrong time in regard to the way that the Bullets want to play right now. And as Adams went out to uh, Denver and is doing extremely well in that particular offensive concept, that's something that the Bullets will have to decide in regard to Muggsy Bogues. The Detroit fans calling for Chuck Nevin, the only man on the club that's got a championship ring. He got it when he was played with L.A. Isaiah Thomas for two. Isaiah now 14 points, 11 assists, seven rebounds, and five steals. This is Allery for three. Credit the three-pointer, number 31, Mark Allery. Obviously, 25 seconds remaining, Billy. The Bullets not a three-point shooting team. They actually uh, one of the lowest in the league. And you figure there are three players this year that made over 100 threes. Dumars with an off-balance shot and banks it in. That's a nice shot to take because you can cost your defender that extra step when you shoot off the wrong foot. A lot of people have given Washington up for dead early in the season. Kevin Lockery was released. Wes Unsell came on. And although Washington finished 38-44, Wes was 30-25 and 25 as the head coach. Put new life into the bullets. Yes, and had injuries that he faced uh, even at that point. Pistons were up by nine midway through the third quarter, went on a 9-3 run to go up 15, but Dennis Rodman caught fire, and that's when the Detroit Pistons opened things up. 38 seconds remaining now, shot clock expires, as Isaiah Thomas makes good on a two-point shot. Manute's gonna try something here. Yeah, oh, Manute's on that board. Board. Took it all the way. First two for Manu Bowl. But obviously, the Detroit defense was not geared up to go ahead and hammer him down on the inside. They don't want to commit any fouls at this point. 12 seconds on the shot clock, 15 on the game clock. Talk to Bill, Bill Lambeer before the game, Tim, and he's a great golfer, particularly for a man his size. I doubt if there anybody in the country can beat a man that size. He said, I'm not picking up a golf club until we finish playing basketball. I said, that may be July. And it looks that way for him. They're moving on. So the Detroit Pistons move on and will now play the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan has had some big games against Detroit this year, but Detroit has won those games. Our MVP today is Isaiah Thomas. He ends with 16 points, 11. In Boston, the Celtics last night made it two for two against the Lancers.